My name is Bennett Rogers. I have been a personal trainer at BoomFit for about, what has it been, seven months now? That's seven right, and a half man. Months? Yeah. Since January. So it's been, it's been a crazy ride, that's for sure. Yeah, you came on I've, perfect timing. Well, you came actually before that. You were, I think, October. Yeah, that's when it, for, yeah. and for then like you officially started in late December, early January. Yeah. So that was when I was transitioning from Gold's Gym Tower Point to which here. you were a trainer over there for a while. For yeah, for I guess almost three years, like two and a half. Yeah, maybe almost three. So it was it was a good start for me. It was definitely um, I, I I enjoy it was it was a lot of freedom. I enjoyed that, but I really liked the community here. So that was the biggest thing I saw because I I did. I came in and, and this is my first CrossFit gym I've ever been to. Yeah, so you, you came here before you were there. <laughs> yeah, so when I was 18 years old, fresh, like fresh right out of of, of uh, high school. And then I also just got my personal training certification. So I was, I was definitely in a learning phase and I knew that. I knew it wasn't going to be easy, like getting my foot through a door anywhere. So I just I took it as more of like an opportunity to learn. Yeah, I came here. I was like, I don't know. I mean, what. you did a CrossFit for about a year. Yeah, it was about a year. I, don't know, I I didn't know what I was getting myself into. I thought I knew like how like that I could lift because I came from football. So you know, it was just oh, there's something heavy on the ground. Everyone's like, oh, who can do this? The or curl it or who can clean it or who can? It was just whatever. You know, no one really knew a good form. It was just, what led you to like find a CrossFit gym in the first place? Honestly, I just, I was looking for gyms around the area. I knew Gold's Gym was around. I was like, let me, I was like, this is something I already kind of know. Like I knew bodybuilding. I knew like, I knew how to sit in a machine. I knew how, like, how to do that stuff. And I was pretty big. I was really strong. I knew how to somewhat have good form on deadlift and other things. Like I knew how to get my way around. But I, I didn't know there was a, a specific way until I kind of went to CrossFit. So CrossFit was something new. I heard about it. So let me just try this. Like I, I've never seen this, and I, I when I when I walked in, I, I know a lot of people were doing things. I was like, this is this is crazy. I I didn't even look it up. I just heard of the name, and I and I and as soon as I got here, there was a class going on. And there were people were climbing ropes and doing all kinds of thrusters and cleans and stuff. And I was like, I, I knew what clean, I knew what a power clean was, but they were doing all these weird movements I've never seen before. I was like, this is this is interesting. Let me. I, got, I think I need to try some of this. Like people were running really hard. Like it was just a full class going on. It was a perfect time for me to become like to show up. Yeah. And then it was just. So now, are you? Did you do gymnastics growing up? No, I did like a little. Like I know in football we did roll like some kind of tumbling. So that was my only experience. Like four rolls, back rolls, like diving over things, and so I, got, I liked flips. But did you do say. gymnastics here at Brazos Valley? Uh, well, my roommate now. He wasn't then, but he. I met him at Gold's Gym. He was just a random person I ran into, and we ended up becoming friends. And he was, he just got into gymnastics and eventually became a coach. And he was like, "Hey, you should come try this." I was like, "He's like, do flips and cartwheels." I was like, Are "You kidding me?" I was like, I don't, "I'm way too big for that." He's like, "No, no, 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 no." He's like, "You just just come try it." And I, I went and and I knew for sure I was gonna get laughed at. Cause well, the reason I asked, I saw you do like a backflip here one time or something. Oh, I've done, I've done some, I've done. Well, if, as long as Rogers spot, spot me, I'll throw a backflip. I mean, I'm not too crazy. I'm trying not to get yeah. too injured again. But yeah, cart like cartwheels and in and, and like, I guess like round offs. I can do that on a tumbling floor. I'll be a little more crazy. But so yeah, yeah. So I want to, you know, I want to kind of start from the beginning, kind of whenever you would say your fitness journey slash, you know if you played sports yeah. growing up, but I know I want to talk about you, you hurt your back at some point, mm -hmm. And I think you have a lot of wisdom and in, in, insight in that area because of what you've been through. So let's start with, you know, at what age do you recall actually work starting your, your, your first workout organized workout? Was it sports? Mm -hmm. Was it, I've been playing baseball. I don't know. My dad's a superstar. Like he was like, he almost went to the major league for baseball. And then he just an all around like super athlete. So he was always pushing me to do stuff, like, because he was always, you know, he, he likes to talk about how grand he was in his goal of days. So for, for you know, I didn't quite follow that. I was more of, like, the video game kind of kid. Yeah. I, and I played sports, but it wasn't my thing. It was more like I wanted to, you know, play with my friends and, and play games and stuff. It was more my thing. But since I was, like, five, I started t-ball when I was, like, five, and I played baseball for a long time up until I was in, like, fifth grade. And I played basketball for a little while. It was something, just something different for like three years. And then when, then I, then I played football in seventh grade, and that was when 
like that that was a more then that was my thing for a while i just tried all different kinds of sports. yeah so you stuck with football for for high school and and then i got hurt my, my was it sophomore year yeah let my end of my sophomore year and i got and i ended up i broke my back from from like diving for the football because i was an offensive lineman so wow the quarterback fumbled it and i got it but i scorpioned you know where your legs go up behind you and over your head almost pretty much where your heels touch your head i did that and i really injured it and then of course i was first string so i was like no i'm, I'm, I'm staying in you know i heard it clearly i didn't know so what you happened kept playing i kept playing on it for another month or so like it, it got worse and worse and worse and i got to the point where i just couldn't I couldn't walk. What did like, you do was, to it? Like, what was the diagnosis? Uh, that was the main, like, I knew when I heard it and I should have just stopped, you know, I, I was, it was more of like, I don't want to be that person. Like, Oh, I complained about something that no one really knew what was wrong, you know, uh, but it kept gotten worse. And I got to the point where I was like, I can't do anything. Like I, I'm getting up out of the morning, like just getting in my bed. I was like, I can, I, you know, I had to crawl out of bed in the morning. So. And then so you stopped playing. Yeah, then I was like, okay, something's clearly wrong. And and then it was just, we figured out it was just, it was minor, minor, it was a minor break then. And it healed, like it took, it took about half a year. Of not doing anything. Yeah, I'm not doing anything. And then, of course, I lost strength, but I came back, I, I healed pretty quickly, actually. Like, and I, and I was good. And then for years after that, three or four, until I was 20. So then that was what, six, 17, 16 or 17 until 20. I he, I was pretty good. I was actually reaching my my peak when I was freshly twenty years old. Like as far as strength, I was more of a strength athlete. And then, so that, but you were eighteen when you came to College Station. Mm -hmm. So then I was fre I was just over that injury, and I was pretty fresh. So, so when you started here at at our gym, mm -hmm. were you still feeling the pain in a your back? Bit. Oh yeah, like overhead stuff like i remember there's a lot of overhead stuff like snatches and things yeah. and i was like i can't i don't know how you guys are doing that overhead squats yeah overhead squats were killing me i remember and deadlifts certain like two if i went too heavy over like 315 on a deadlift it was killing me so did you just adjust modify mm -hmm. yeah and, and then that was when matt haynes was a big time coach in here yeah. and he and he was tearing into me a little bit because i was going back to my old habits well and he had tweaked his back yeah, a couple he, years he saw, before that he definitely saw something coming up in me and then I listened to him, and, I, and, I, and it fixed a lot of things. And I didn't know that he had such a specific way of doing like a form that I wasn't aware of. I just thought you just picked up weight, however, you know, however, you know. I didn't. Had you ever been coached like that before? Mm -mm. No, not for not for like exercise, only for football, for football or sport, and functional position. stuff. Like go run and this or yeah. here's weights. There's, there, we had the weight room, but you so, learn from strong people. So that first year, did you? get better stronger yeah I, I, I improved for here I, my endurance definitely like my my endurance and my just mobility I was able to squat deeper I finally started figuring out how how to fix my squat and like I had knee problems from football too so there was a certain I, I was only, I was limited on my squat for a while so it was that and then I definitely fixed a lot of little things like just I didn't I, like I said I've never been exposed to a place that had such sp specific form and technique it was just oh go lift heavy weights and it was like oh if that hurt uh let's figure it let's do it this way you know or, you know, or just watch the person that could lift the most weight and you just mimic how that person did it yeah that was how we learned was, yeah and then oh we put on 225 for power clean oh who can rep it the most times no no form it's just yeah do no it. no instruction yeah. on you put on 135 you know, like who can curl it the most times <laughs> i think that is you know that was one thing that i feel like crossfit set a standard for yeah. coaching that was really high and you know you uh, there's tons of different gyms but i feel like these days like if you go to a crossfit gym hopefully i believe that they're gonna coach you right but going through each position in a power clean for example you know um i don't recall in high school ever going th that thoroughly into technique for a hang clean we did hang cleans yeah um or even a deadlift yeah we we didn't you know i mean all. checking like uh, now it's standard if you're going to do deadlifts in a crossfit class we're going to check your back yeah. angle we're going to see how you're you know we're going to hold you in that position for a while we're going to start you with a pvc before you know i don't That's ever so remember. important <laughs> yeah. it doesn't remember it doesn't matter who you are if you're first like now that i'm doing on ramps like i every person that walks in i put them through the similar yeah. little screen test first and i gotta see if they can even just 
hold a position before because they could be they could be big and strong and they could have a background, but it's just this is a different like you, you actually you're, you're you're we're putting you through like a like a learning curve yeah first before you you can we start so let when you, go you were a member here was that when you got personal training certified yeah so that I, year that that summer so i was already before i got here i was personal training certified okay. so i knew a lot about i knew a good amount about bodybuilding and like like bench press like bench press was my bread and butter i benched like 335 before you know when I, before i was 18 so that was my goal wow so when i was 17 like that's when i was right after that like towards the end of that injury and then summer hit, and then my strength kind of went down. So when I got here at CrossFit, I haven't really been working out too much. I was busy with school and that personal training certification, and I was learning a lot. I was re, I was figuring, and I was watching professionals, and I was do, figuring out other. Were ways you wanting to, to get into powerlifting? For a while, I did some powerlifting in in high school. Like no no gear though. Just I mean, three thirty five bench is pretty. Yeah. I mean, how much did you weigh? I was like. Two two oh five okay probably. yeah and then, so, so I, it was like a natural that was my natural gift was upper body like pull ups I was able to do like thirty pull ups twenty five thirty pull ups so it was my my deadlift was strong I did like five fifteen definitely not good form though mm. you know it was just it was just do it you know there's other people that could do it and you're like oh well it's your turn you go try <laughs> yeah that's all it was what you know? what made you want to get personal training certified that young. When I went to, so I quit football my after my junior year. So my senior year, I was okay. I gotta fix my injuries. Like I'm done with football. Like it was fun. I'm over it. I had played my year of varsity and had fun, but I got I just can't do it anymore. So I I loved working out and exercise, and the coaches wouldn't let me stay in the gym. So I was like, ah, well, I guess I'm just gonna go. I had one other friend that I did powerlifting with in football, so he we went to Gold's Gym for my whole senior year, and I just got I got big. So I got started doing bodybuilding and I got really strong again. And that was when I, I, you know, I got all my lifts back up with the form I knew I could, you know, I knew how. And then you talk to some older guy, old, like, you know, those guys have been lifting for like 30 years. Cause you see some older gentlemen that look really big, obviously on steroids and P like, you know, PEDs and, but it doesn't matter. It's more like they know what they knew more of what they were doing and they were actually helping me. And mm-hmm. I liked that. And I was like, interesting. So there's actually more specific ways to do things than I thought. It wasn't just go in and go hard. You know, you can't, you can't do that. Even like in CrossFit, like you have one or two days, maybe a week, that where you can go 95 to 100%. Mm-hmm. And you got to back. All your other days are you're practicing. So that's, and then I learned that even through bodybuilding. It was like, okay, one or two days. You pick your one or two days that you can really focus on that week. The other days you're practicing your form. Yeah. And I never heard that before. I, I thought it was 100% every day. Yeah. You go in and you grind, but you can't. <laughs> no, you, 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 you can't you do your that. Body. You, you, I, I figured that out quickly. I was, I was killing myself yeah. doing that. Like I had it up here. I was like, okay, go hard, you know. But I did not realize that you had to rest and, and figure out how to make your body react. Do you to, think there's a lot of young guys that think that way? Yeah, there is, there's a lot. Because, like, you see, and you see, like, on TV or you, know, you you watch people one rep max and yelling and going hard, but you don't see the before that. When it's almost like looking at a tree. Like when you look at a tree, you see a big oak tree, right? You see the, the trunk and you see the big leaves, you see the sprouts and the blossoms, but you don't see the all the roots underneath. You don't see all the stuff they went through before, like the endurance and the and the, the skill mm-hmm. and just the stability, learning how to, how to get in a deep squat or learn, you know, you don't really see that. So you just see their, their PRs and, and now they're well, just having fun. It's like any professional sport, yeah. right? You see Michael Jordan. Yeah. You see just the, 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 the elite. I don't know if you watched the last dance, the ESPN documentary. Yeah. Oh yeah. man. It's amazing. You know, it, it, like, but nobody wants to put in that much work. They don't understand how much work it takes. Yes. So, um, so when you started personal training, like, what was that experience like? I mean, it was shortly, I guess, after you yeah. worked out here for a mm-hmm. year, went to Golds. So I learned a lot from here too, because yeah. it it almost like added just to my tool belt. Like I knew a lot. so when I went to Golds Gym, I knew I was more comfortable starting there as a personal trainer, of course, just because I knew the machines and I knew bodybuilding, I knew certain things, like I knew powerlifting. I've done all that. And now when I came here, I had a different idea on form, just in, in just, just different functional fitness, like kipping pull-ups. Like I, like I said, I could do 20 to 30 reps on strict pull-ups, but 
I could not do a kipping pull-up. Save. I could not figure out what was going on. I was like, are you kidding me? I was like, everyone here that can't even do five pull-ups can do this, but I can't. <laughs> they can I do can 20 do, kipping. <laughs> yeah, and then for the longest time, while they were doing kipping, I was, do, I was keeping up on strict. And then Matt was like, Matt Haynes was like, hey, can you please like try – you just try doing one of them. <laughs> I, was, I was like, bro, I, I don't know what that even means. Yeah. But I started, you know, it was just different. Like I said, functional. We didn't, it, I was more used to strict and strength. And here you don't like strength is last here. Yeah. That's what I realized. I was like, there's so much, I need athleticism here. Yeah. Like, this is so not, when you, when you went to gold's gym, um, what types of workouts did you transition to after doing CrossFit? For so it really helped me with Gold's Fit. Like I was a co- I was a coach there. I coached every single class. They had like Gold Cycle, Gold's Fit, Gold's Burn, and it was all just like Gold's Burn was more like an endurance and like a like a just a state like stations, more like high intensity interval training. I would yeah. say, yeah. So, but um, and then Gold's Fit was what really helped me with. Like I, that was a good point for me because it was learning kipping pull ups. It was really similar, you know. It had rigs, but it was kettlebell training, so that was a cool. That was a different thing that they are, they gave to me was a kettlebell. I learned how to use a kettlebell. So here we use some, but it was more like barbell related. Mm-hmm. So I learned a lot of barbell skills, like different barbell skills here, and then I learned a lot of kettlebell skills there. So it was, it was a good, mm-hmm. it was a good trade off. But I was ready for it because here I learned all. The create, you know. Did you at some point in that period of time hurt your back worse? So that was where yeah, I was definitely coming up. It was in when I was twenty. I did, I first started doing tumbling, and like that back injury was still always there. I felt it sometimes, like when I do overhead press, I had to be careful. Was that the one all the way back from high school? Uh-huh. Same spot, and then I re-injured it by doing a back handspring. Mm. I did a back handspring and and like really arched. I guess I didn't keep my core tight, and I I tweaked it. And I was like, ooh, that, that hurt. And I kept, and I didn't let it heal fully. I should have given it a week or two. And I kept going back to my normal routine on weightlifting. I was like, ooh, I shouldn't be doing this. And I was doing, I was, I was getting really strong. Like I was going, I, I did a 225 overhead press. And that hurt my back. That, that definitely added to it. Strict press? Yeah, strict press. Shoulder press? Yeah, that was my best. And 225 yeah, pounds? Yeah, pretty much like nearly almost, I almost locked it out. But I got it to like, and then your back, three, four, and I felt my back tweak, and I stopped. So I felt and I oh. really injured myself trying that, and then I didn't let it heal fully again. I was like, oh, you know, I, I healed for about a week, and I started going back to squats, and then a squat kind of did it again. Like I just wasn't, it, my form was good, but like you get tired, and I wasn't in that little, and I wasn't used to that spot being flared again. So you don't need to go back. So as soon as you feel How something, how old are you now? 22 now so so it's been a couple uh, years now but i've been really injured for the past two years like just from where, i had to restart oh yeah that had that made me completely restart so what have you learned in the whole you know we'll say way uh, too much yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. G- give give me some insight yeah. or share yeah. some insight with the listeners because it almost was like i needed i hate to say that but it was like it made me completely relook how what the way i did things which is like not a sense I've never heard anybody like ever, of course. Like I, I knew when it, when it came to training clients, I knew exactly what they needed. But for myself, like you're, you're your worst patient, you know. So for me, I was more like I had the football mentality like go, 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 never, you know. You know, I thought I was invincible, clearly not. But <laughs> so I pushed myself way too much where my clients, I could see exactly what they needed and I knew how they were feeling. And so that really helped. But the injuries helped me in a sense – now I feel like I can help other people with the same pain where I didn't know that before. Now that I've come from this journey, I've hurt my shoulder because of like the, my, just because of my lower back, I've injured a lot of other things too. Cause of, because they, they sprout. It's almost like whack-a-mole. You, you fix one thing and another thing sprouts up. So you're yeah. like, it's a constant fight. But, you, but now that I feel like I, I've combed with this back pain, I know how to st- work on my core and like fix the same issues or similar issues with other people. So I see a lot of the same issues with everyone. Like when someone comes in, usually protracted shoulders, weak glute medius, you know, for knee, like as far as knees, tight hips. So I'm starting to see a lot of the things that I had to deal with to kind of get over my injury. They're it's, it's popping up more 
when I when I when a person walks through the door for the first time, I know it's like oh, I almost know immediately what's wrong with them, like without even t- doing a screen on them. I, I think just look when, at you, it now. when you hurt your back, to you immediately have a, a grander care to <laughs> prevent others from doing the same. Yes, like you almost have this like mission. To not allow other people to hurt their backs like you did, and they don't. And when I when I run up to someone, I'm like, hey, I'm like, hey, I need to tell you this right now. Like, yeah. if I see a movement, yeah. they they like they're like, for them they're a little thrown off. They're like, it didn't seem like that big of a yeah. But I almost make it out to be a bigger issue than it is. You're just, just extra cautious, just because well, of I know you it. know how awful it is to be. You not, know, yeah. not be able to put your shoes on, tie your tie your shoes, put your socks on, get out of bed in the morning, get out of bed. Yeah. <laughs> so, would you say now are you? Does it come and go? Like, uh, are you recovered now, or do you get better and then get a little worse, and then get better and then get a little worse? Yeah, that's a good question. So that that's an ongoing fight. Still, like right now, it feels good, but uh, when I work it out, I can tell it's it gets extra tired and i have i'm like i'm like twice the amount of i need like twice the amount of recovery because if the muscles even are a little bit shaky and i put on because i because i've been lifting weights lately and i've noticed like i have to take longer it takes me a week to recover from like a heavy session now like heavy as in like moderate load for me right like from what I use, my old maxes used to be, it's like 50% of that right now. But it that's heavy enough for me to where I get sore for a whole week. So how have you learned to manage that mentally? Yeah, that, that's so for a long time, I was going nuts. I was going crazy. Like I, I wake up and I couldn't do anything other than like glute bridges and bird dogs and hollow holds and maybe walk. Yeah. <laughs> like you go from lifting weights and love like making PRs left and right. Like I was hitting way too many PRs. That's why I injured myself too. Like I re injured myself. You get too excited and you got to be careful. So you got to learn how to hit a PR and then back off and let your body actually recover from that. Cause you don't realize that your central nervous system gets so taxed either. So that's a big thing is like, okay, you come in and you're, you have it, you have it in your plan. Okay. I'm going to hit a heavy session today, but your central nervous system is not ready. And you don't know that. You don't feel, or you don't, you don't realize that it's until you go in and warm up. So that was also a thing. Have you found ways to listen to your body and kind of pay more attention yeah. to, like, what are some examples of things that you now are more aware of in a warm up? Yeah. Or your body's vulgar. Yeah. Your body will t- let you know. They tell, like, it it speaks, but it's just you gotta learn how to listen. It's it's when you start warming up. That's the that's the whole. That's almost the whole workout is what the warm up tells you it is so you start going through the motion cuz you're like okay i have a, i have a heavy single today on deadlift all right let's find out so you start warming up like you do your usual routine you know start up the shoulders maybe start work you know get your do some butt kicks or high knees like just get everything warmed up i, I do a full body warm up with everyone every time like you always start simple like you come in and do some pass throughs or ring rows and just go slow, like give your body a little chance and then maybe hit the bike. I think the soul bike's a good way to figuring out what's wrong too because it gets your legs and your your whole core, like your lats, your abs, because you're how much you have to twist and and keep your chest up. So that even simple things like that, you can already tell, all right, I, I, have a feel, I feel a little tightness in my lat or my shoulder feels like it's not listening you know, it's so, almost like your body's talking to you. Yeah, yeah, it is. Warm up. It's telling you, like, all right, what am I feeling today? You could be feeling a little soreness that you didn't realize because your warm up finally allows think, it to pop out. You know, having the experience that you have with now being, I would call it, highly in tune with your body, and probably before being very little in tune with yourself, do you think most people have a hard time kind of? listening or or is it very loud and clear it, depending definitely depending on what it is if it's like major areas like i know knees and lower back and um shoulders those three things like for sure everyone knows like you feel that you feel that real quick but i feel like it's like it's more of the imbalances it's not necessarily just if you already have pain that makes sense but it's it now it's like it's not just the pain like all right what's hurting what's tight it's like all right, is there an imbalance going on here? Like, 
do I see that my foot, whenever I, as soon as I move my feet back in a squat, like as soon as I get my, like try to put, put, like don't even look at your feet and try to take like three or four steps backwards and then, then look at your, and set your feet in a squat and then look at your feet. How many times can you do that in a row when you're, and then your feet are in the exact same place? Mm. That's, that's a, like little things like that or, or like, can you sit up on a bench press with your eyes closed? You know, like little things like that. Or can you, like when you squat, when you squat, like a front squat, especially like, or like look in a mirror. Sometimes it's good to have a mirror or video yourself. Is anything shifting? Like, are your hips moving or like, do you feel one? Sometimes you tightness just means that you're imbalanced a little bit too. Like if you feel like one side's tight a little bit in your hips, when you're squatting, there's highly likely that some, there's a shift going on too. So, so you, you focus a lot on personal training with clients. You know, yes. you, that's kind of primarily where you coach people. Um, what goes into customizing? Cause that's the value of personal training. It's like a customized program for somebody. What goes into customizing a plan for a client, whether they know it or not, right? They might come in for weight loss and, and you might factor that into their customization, but are you factoring in a little bit of these things that we're talking about? Oh yeah, definitely. Like, well, cause I always have an idea of what, you always have like a skeleton in your head, you know, air quotes there of what you want to do that day. But it, it's the little thing. So it could be like, <clears throat> okay, well, especially if I've never met a person and they're coming in or like, if I'm just taking for their first session, like, okay, I know I want to work on the squat today. And sometimes it's as clear as that. Okay. Just squat in my head. So I think about that. And then I take them through like high knees, butt kicks, toy soldiers. Cause I'm trying to see, and I want their feedback. I'm like, all right, we're starting with this and how do you feel as far as this is what I'm thinking like as far as programming like continuously because I'm looking for tightness and I'm looking for imbalances like in the knees so, so especially you know when I do cowboy walks you know the banded yeah. walks as soon as I see that I'll, I'll know if their knees are have a knee valgus or or like their glute medius is weak I lo- I'll look for that immediately so I, I'll look for Protracted shoulders. I looked how see how, how how much control they have on put you know scapular depression and retraction. So that would be like a ring row for an example. I'd just do a simple ring row with them, without really saying much. Like I show them, I show them, and then I want them to just, just I don't want to put too much information out there yet because I just want to see how they naturally want to grab the rings and, and that pull. And then I start throwing cues out there because if I see protracted shoulders and they're really struggling with it, then we're gonna have to practice on banded retraction techniques like you know just how do you simple things like that yeah absolutely so how do you take somebody from their first day yeah knowing that you're not going to fix everything in one session of course yeah and and at the same time you want them to walk away feeling accomplished um and hope that we continue the relationship for a long yeah, time that's so a that, good question so that i can help you so yeah, that, that's a, that's a really good question. So, because you have to make everyone feel accomplished, and you can't obviously you can't fix a million things in one. Like, you ha- you have to pick one thing that they're really struggling with, and then you start with that, and you and you have to find little wins. So that and that's where it comes to like knowing how to regress emotions. So because if even if a, if they're on a ring row, say their their shoulder, you know they have protracted shoulders and they're doing the ring row. And they still have a hard time, and they're like, "Ah, oh, my shoulder is starting to hurt," or, or not hurt, but like, like I feel, like, because I asked them, "Hey, do you do you feel any tightness in your shoulder?" If they say yes, because it's not a pain yet, then I know, okay, so the ring row is even too hard right now. Mm. So what we have to do is that we'll we'll start with a band, because a band applies, you can apply pressure very slowly, and you can adjust the difficulty really easily. You you just attach that to a pole, and you start them by just doing the the retraction. Like learning how to retract your shoulder blade without even bending your elbow. Because that most likely means that they have a hard time just doing that. So then you start with something small. And then figure, and then if they can slowly figure that out and they're like, okay, do you, do you see how you're moving your arm without even bending your elbow? And they're like, I don't even, that doesn't even make sense. You know, they don't understand that retraction. Yeah, so yeah. if you can get them to figure that out, that's a win. Yeah. And they're like, wow, I didn't know, you know. I never even thought you could even do that. I think this is really neat to expand on because most people don't realize the the amount of 
time and energy and thought that goes into programming, especially individually for clients. Yeah. And I like what you're saying because I agree. You're studying them during the warm up. Yeah. Even though they don't even know it. They don't know. You're, you're having a conversation. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You're probably, you're talking about. Seriously, yeah. It, but your eyes and you're observing things the entire time. And yeah. I think that's, again, I, I mean, it's cool to hear you say that because I think that's, that is what makes great personal trainers is people that are, you know, we're, and we have a skeleton quote, right? That we, meaning a template of a workout that's what we plan to do. But if, you know, you're, if you have a hard time touching your toes as we're walking down the studio, you know, alternating feet, trying to come down and up, probably not going to do a, a very heavy deadlift that day or, yeah. or even a deadlift at all because your hamstrings are tight, your lower back's tight. Or we need to really warm it up and do more than that. Exactly. Know? No, and that's and that was a good thing you brought up too. Is like, it's like yeah, because we're talking about that, but personal training is exactly that. It's personal. Like you're the whole time we're taking through the warm up because we're not obviously we're not talking about fitness the whole time. Right. Like we're maybe half and half. Like half the time you're 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 talking to them. You're trying to get them to feel comfortable with you first of all because you know that that's the whole point is trust in a sense is that. You know, you're, they're trusting trusting you not to get injured. Like, and most people are coming in injured. Mm-hmm. Like, they have something. Everyone has something wrong. Very, very few. I would say maybe one, like 10% of people come in with nothing. I, when right. I ask them, I'm like, have you had any previous injuries or do you, is something bothering you right now? Yeah. Maybe 10% of people yeah. that I've talked to. So uh, let's switch gears. So you kind of, you know, that takes you to present moment. You're continuing to navigate yep. the, the injury. And I think that's... You know, what I've learned, hurting my back, I think for the first time, it would have been 2010, was, so that was eight years ago. Mm. And, it, you know, it's, it's, it's a come and go type of thing. You know, I've learned that it comes when I don't warm up well, um, when I'm not fully engaged in the movement, right? When I'm tired, yeah. like, in other words, exhausted, right, in the middle of a, of a workout or... Um, you know, just not properly warmed up. Yeah. And, and or when I'm doing more than I should. Uh, and then it goes, right? Because that's the cool thing that I've learned too. It's like, it's not a forever. Like, I can feel good again. Sometimes when your back hurts and you're in the pain, it's kind of like being really sick. Like when you have like a fever and you're achy and like, you know, this was all before coronavirus, like a normal sickness, <laughs> normal. you know? Like you almost are like, oh my goodness, am I ever going to feel better again? And I think that's how like a back injury or injury can feel. But it does. You know, it's amazing. Like if you properly give it attention and rest and don't do anything mm-hmm. to hurt it worse, then th- the cool thing about those things is they heal. Like it, it does yes. get better. It just takes time. And you get smarter when you get hurt. You get smarter. Already. Yeah. And so, but um, before we close out the podcast, uh, you know, I'm curious your nutrition, right? Like, I think you're a really kind of fit, like low body fat kind of guy. Um, you're young. So not like, always. Yeah. Either. So <laughs> recent, recently I've, I've dialed in nutrition. Yeah. So what does that, that mean for you? What does it mean to dial in nutrition? Well, I learned a lot over quarantine actually, cause I, I had to cook more at home and I was like, okay, if I'm going to be at home, I'm going to, it made me stop eating out so much. That's a big thing. Just, you know, you know what you're secretly doing. Like, you know what you're doing, but it's a matter of it's mentally hard to get out of that and make yourself do something because you're always uncomfortable with a new thought. You're like, okay, I need to do this, but I'm uncomfortable with having to make the meals and doing this and this. But it's more along the line of like finding the foods that you you have to you have to love what you eat. If you just find a small like, you're like okay, I'm gonna do the keto diet or I'm gonna do the carnivore diet or I'm gonna do this diet. If you if you have to call it a diet, then you're not going to follow it forever, and then you're going to fall off the wagon at some point, and you're going to be like you're going to lose all this weight, and it's going to come back because you never fixed it to begin with. You don't even know what you did to lose weight. You just oh I just cut off all you know I'm doing this diet, but you don't even know what it meant to do the diet. Like all that's doing is is just you're you're somewhat comfortable with the foods, so you find a diet that works for you because you can stick to it, but it, you're still miserable. So I I know that's you know. It's hard to no. Find I, the perfect... I think what you're what you're saying, and as I hear you, I agree with you because the, the most accurate way to call it something is it's the Bennett diet. 
Yeah. Because it's the way that you eat. Yeah. It, you know, it's exactly. Not, it's yeah. not a diet, right? I don't follow I'm just, anything. Yeah, I just, exactly. I finally found the foods I love to eat that keep me full. So I eat a lot of vegetables and I eat a lot of fruits. So like in the fruit, I love any kind of like watermelon or honeydew or cantaloupe or like berries. Those are the top fruits that you eat that are really like they have more water content and they're just they're extremely high in fiber. So things like that. And I've, eat, I've been eating a lot more uh, things like uh, bell pepper and zucchini like in, in cauliflower. So I use those to replace a lot like rice. Like I think right like. Rice is good, but it's kind of a waste of nutrients. Like, it's a waste of space, in my opinion. Like, you're eating... I can eat endless rice. Mm. I can eat more than probably most people. So, that's... I struggle with food. I used to be bigger. So, yeah. the biggest thing I did was just... I ate more foods that fill me up. So, when you... Describe that. You used to be overweight? So, I used to be like... Two, when I was in football, I was like... Not like extremely obese, but like I was... I was considered obese at one point. High body was, fat. Yeah, like two. I was probably definitely thirty percent. You know, twenty five, thirty percent plus. How heavy? So like two thirty. Okay. That's one of my heaviest. But for me at that time, like that was about thirty percent body fat. Yeah, you know, I, I was two forty two. So, so yeah, so I know that two thirty to two forty. Not uh, muscle. My heaviest. You're not muscle. Some, but not a little. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> more so, fat. Barely doing push ups. Yeah. So so you're it. it you know what it means to eat clean, feel, oh, yeah. feel lean. And I used to be able to eat three triple meats in one sitting. Like, yeah. I could, I could put away some you have food. You big appetite. Oh, yeah. I can now eat most people. Not anymore because now, honestly, when you fix your food, when you fix your diet, diet, I should say, in yeah. air quotes, yeah. like fix what you eat, I, get, I don't want to eat as much in one sitting anymore. Agree. I eat really filling foods like leaner meats. Like even just following the, the six-week challenge we have here is – is pointing you in that direction. There's more vegetables. There's more substance. If you do it right, if you're eating the right things, you're so full. You're like, I don't even want, you're like, I don't want more food. So what led you to dial it in a little bit more? Well, also, I'm a personal trainer, so I need to look the part. But I was like, you know what? I'm tired of being the same body fat person. Yeah. I was like, I'm tired of looking like this. Where do you? What would you say you went from, like, what percent to what percent if you had to uh, measure I was like, a guess? 15 to 20 percent for a while like eventually i got to the point where i was just doing a lot of cardio to yeah. keep up with it because my eating because i couldn't give up my eating habits i couldn't give up my my chips and queso so yeah <laughs> and but, then where would you say you're at and now that? i'm probably as far as like the in body scan it's it's hard to know for like an actual body but like bodybuilding stage is different but the in body scan is like eight or nine percent so yeah so you probably you, eight to twelve percent more yeah like which is fantastic. Now, which is I'm super like I'm strong, because that's I think that I preach that. Get so lose body fat until you get to where, where you're comfortable with how you look, and that you still have energy in the gym. If you don't, if you're so lean that you don't have energy in the gym, you're too lean. You're 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 not even going to be gaining muscle. Yeah. So you're you're what's the point? Like unless you're going to the beach for like one or two days and you're trying to be shredded for that, that makes sense. But I think you need you need, definitely need to eat though like yeah you gotta you gotta feel good like you gotta come in the gym and on your days off if you're not going to the gym you clearly don't need to eat a ton of junk right like that's another thing like on your days you're not working out for sure you know you can't get it in you have to do well in eating like yeah it's one or the other so if i'm sometimes i give myself that cheat because i like pizza i used to make pizza all the time so i like pizza every now and then so if i'm gonna have it i i punish myself with cardio that's my that's my one thing I do. So some people, if you don't want to do cardio, what's then, your punishment? What kind of cardio? Like the soul bike oh, run. Yeah. Like I've been running more because I finally, my injuries. So are, you, you did the salt. You do two minutes. How many calories yeah. on the, echo I tried bike. I, on the echo bike. I tried to get 80 in two minutes and I got 62. I rolled on the floor after that for like 15 Dude, minutes, 62 calories in two minutes on I, the echo bike. I don't recommend it to anybody doing that. That's wow. not that's not how you burn calories. I'm saying <laughs> that that's you burn 62 calories in, in that that's, short a period that's of time. Probably the equivalent <laughs> of like what, like a bite of pizza. Yeah, yeah. Lucky <laughs> one piece of pizza is probably 200, 300 like, calories. 300, I would 300 say calories. Most, yeah. So so okay. Last question. Um, I ask every person on this yeah. podcast. The title of the podcast is "Building Better People." You've heard me talk about that till I'm blue in the face. Um, <laughs> 
I want to hear what does that mean to you? Like when you hear me say building better people, but uh, what does it mean to you? What is that tagline on our walls, on our shirts? What, what, how do you receive and translate that? Well, every person that comes in is clearly here for a reason. Like some, something or someone has pushed them. Because yeah, it, very, very rarely is it, oh, I just want to get stronger. Or I want to, you know, there's a, there's a way deeper issue at, at hand here when, when someone walks in. Like most, most times, most times. Like very, you know, if, it's, if it's an athlete, it makes more sense. But a lot of times, I really like it here because it's, we, we don't just have, like a like an athlete that walks in like it's we sometimes we do but it's, I like how everyone feels like they can come and like this is a CrossFit gym where most before maybe like ten years ago we think CrossFit you think of only athletes coming here but now you see an average person walking in and be like what's what's CrossFit you know, that's amazing so then they come in and they've never seen weightlifting before they've never you know done anything with a deadlift or, or like a deadlift or a back anything with a barbell they're like that doesn't even that sounds foreign to me what is this i like this and then so i just this person that's never done any fitness walks in and i and i change their life within a matter of a month you know just completely fixing eating habits and and just fixing pain so if i, I can i've noticed i can fix pain a lot more often now that i know what my injuries are so i the facts that i can really change someone's outlook on the way fitness or what fitness is and also fix habits and, and pain. So those are my biggest things that I really think that I love about how has building fitness, better people. Yeah. How has fitness impacted your life? Last question. How oh, has it made yeah. you a better version of you? Well, it's like, you got to put the grind in, you got to put your work in. So like I thought, if I'm, <laughs> why would I go eat? A ham, like a burger from Whataburger. If I just went and worked out for an hour to two hours, I worked my tail off. It's so much harder to come in and work out and do things correctly and fix your injuries and make sure you feel good and this and that. And then you go and you leave and you go get a hamburger from Whataburger and ruin it all. Like, are you kidding me? Like, that's the biggest, you know. So I just feel like fitness to me is a, is, is a way of fixing your life for good. Because it teaches you good habits. If you have to come in, you got to put your dues in every day. It's like your horse pill. You come, you you have to come in. You got to take your pill. So if you miss out on a day, well, that's like you're losing your hard work. So it's like you miss one day, and that's like eventually that's two or three days of hard work. You know. Yeah. So one every one day you miss, just think about that. That's maybe two or three days of hard work you could have put in.